Hello, my name is Tim Vanderelli. I do magneto optic research and development for Ferrocell USA. I put together this presentation for the Magnetism and Magnetic Materials Conference for 2021. This year's theme of the conference is Enhancing the Modern Innovations and Novel Improvements in Magnetism and Magnetic Materials. My presentation is about experiment, observation, and measurement of the optical response of a thin film ferrohydrodynamic fluid in a magnetic field. The ferrolens, a window into magnetism. A ferrolens, or ferrocell, consists of two optically flat transparent windows separated by a dynamic thin film composed of a small percentage of nano-sized magnetite particles. These particles are coated with a polar surfactant and suspended in a carbon-based carrier fluid. Commercially known as ferrofluid, this liquid metal responds with some unique optical properties when reduced to a 20 micron thin film, then contained sealed and irradiated with light while influenced by a magnetic field. I will first discuss macro-sized filings and how they react to light and magnetism, then compare them with nanomagnetite particles and share their physical and optical differences obtained through experiment. Macro-sized filings create little magnets and mass together when influenced by a magnetic field. Their size determines particle density at the center of a magnet as seen here in my three recreations of Faraday's famous filings experiment from 1851 using a magnetic dipole below a glass window with filings on top. On the left in figure 2a we see a magnetic dipole using 850 micron iron filings. The filings attract one another into and across the center of the field. In figure 2b, the magnetic dipole using 400 micron iron filings. Notice there's less accumulation of filings in the center of the field. This is the pattern noted by Faraday. On the right, in figure 2c, is a magnetic dipole using 10 nanometer magnetite power. There is a noticeable lack of particle density in the center of the field. So when induced by a magnetic field, an iron filing is transformed into a ferromagnet, but a nanoparticle becomes a ferrimagnet. The filings don't move within the field, but they rotate until they are parallel with the field. Macro-sized particles form magnet bridges and become attracted together to span across the center of the field. These are the primary characteristics of a ferrofluid. In bulk form, the suspended nano-sized particles are coated with a polar surfactant and are super paramagnetic single domains and opaque to light. When influenced by magnetism, magnetite particles in a thin film assemble into multi-domain ferromagnetic chains that repel one another. As a thin film, light can pass in between repelling particle chains. Unlike Maxwell's theory of the static refractive system, a ferrolens is a transparent, chaotic, dynamic system that experiences positive entropy slowly until it eventually collapses. Without an applied magnetic field, the nanoparticles exist in a super paramagnetic state. They remain in equilibrium due to the surfactant's ionic double layer around each particle and respond with steric repulsion from their collective positive ionic charges. 
Van der Waals forces keep the particles suspended within the colloidal. These effects keep the particles separated and prevent the fluid from agglomeration and settling due to gravity. We look at the chart in figure 3. We can see the particle size in relation to domain type. When d, the diameter of the particle, is less than 50 nanometers, the particle will change into a superparamagnetic single domain state with a very sharp hysteresis as we see in the illustration. In figure 4 we have a cartoon depicting the oleic acid double layers. We have a negative layer that binds to the nanoparticle and a positive layer on top of that keeping the nanoparticles in repulsion with their ionic charges. In an open container, a ferrofluid is opaque to light and it will form geometric spikes concentrated in the polar region of a magnetic field. This phenomenon is known as the Rosenzweig instability, which is a unique characteristic of a ferrofluid, whereby a body force develops within the fluid from an induced field. It's an example of the magnetocaloric process in which thermal energy is converted into the mechanical energy of motion. Looking at figure 5, there's a 6,000 Gauss magnetic pole under a glass beaker containing 2 milliliter of ferrofluid consisting of approximately 10 nanometer sized superparamagnetic magnetite particles. If we look around the bottom rim of the beaker, we can see the scattering taking place off of the refractions of these ferrofluid spikes. I think it looks like the middle of a sunflower. <laughs> As a 20 micron thin film, the super paramagnetic fluid inside the ferrolens experiences a pressure gradient instability, thus repelling from the application of a magnetic pole. In figure 6, we see a movie of an air bubble in the center of a ferrolens, which can be used to indicate pressure instability effect from the particle chains repelling and the ferromagnetic effect from non-surficated nanoparticles attracting with the application of a magnetic field. When a ferrofluid thin film is influenced by magnetism, the nano-sized particles assemble into multi-domain ferromagnetic chains with repulsive properties and a line parallel to the magnetic field. These newly formed chains transform the response of the nanoparticles from superparamagnetic to ferromagnetic as they reach domain length. Unlike magnetite filings or bulk ferrofluid, these chains move parallel within the colloidal as they flow from one magnetic pole to the other magnetic pole in a slow, chaotic movement due to the effects of both the Lorentz force and the Rosenzweig or normal instability. Looking at figure 7a is an optical microscope image of parallel magnetite chains forming under the influence of a magnetic field. On the right side of the image we see the chains forming and on the left side they're exiting as they get longer. Figure 7b is the scale of the microscope image. Uh, each line, vertical line, is 10 microns. Each nanoparticle chain 
experiences six degrees of freedom as they all respond simultaneously to changes to the magnet's field orientation. In figure eight, we see nanoparticle chains influenced by the polar orientation of a dipole field and they respond together as a set as seen in this microscopic movie. Light passes in between particle chains. After a few milliseconds at room temperature, the particles will form long chains as they change state to ferromagnetic, repel one another, and respond to light with my scattering. This action is analogous to Young's double slit experiment, only multiplied by millions of slits. In this new state, the ferro lens becomes a dynamic diffraction grating that is assembled by the influence of a magnetic field and constantly in motion. In figure 9, we see a movie of long particle chains moving through the colloidal while repelling each other in a chaotic flow. Light perpendicular to the thin film is influenced by the chain's motion, polarization, and slit density. I'll begin with experiment A, point light source. In this image, we see a host of optical phenomenon resulting from the interference waves created by the dynamic slits between chaotic chains. And we also see a change in the refractive index of the colloidal. A single white LED is located perpendicular directly behind the sphere magnet and ferro lens. Rayleigh scattering is present around the circumference of the magnet, seen in blue, from the partially chained nanoparticles. In the center of the image, or the block region, we see maximum scattering due to the particle chain's parallel alignment with the magnetic field. Looking at figure 10, perpendicular to the thin film, is a single white LED 50 millimeter behind the ferro lens with a 12.7 millimeter diameter sphere magnet centered in front of the ferro lens. Magnetic poles are facing top and bottom facing the camera. Let's take a look at experiment B, multipoint light sources. Multiple light sources parallel to the thin film and arranged around the circumference of a ferro lens create multiple luminous rings of potential in a geometric pattern or a wire grid view, apparently in 3D to the observer. In figure 11, there's a magnetic pole below the ferro lens. It's edge lit with a ring of 36 alternating red, green, and white LEDs oriented facing the center of the cell. In figure 12, there's 16 small disc magnets arranged as dipoles and fixed into a plastic matrix below the ferro lens. And it's edge lit with 36 white LEDs facing inward.
Experiment C is my recreation of Faraday's iron filings experiment using a ferrolens. In figure 13, there is a north magnetic pole on the left, a south magnetic pole on the right, with a small piece of iron glued into the center of a glass disc between the magnetic poles and positioned below a ferrolens with a ring of 36 alternating red, green, and white LEDs around the circumference facing inward. With a 10 degree separation between LEDs parallel to the thin film, the light from each LED scatters through their lowest potential of the magnetic field and they interact with one another apparently in 3D space. Note that parallel lighting results in a dark block region, but perpendicular lighting changes it to a bright region. Experiment D, diffuse light source. A 62 millimeter diameter ferrolens, four millimeter thick, was placed in the center of a 3D printed housing with a three millimeter gap for parallel edge lighting using a white fluorescent ring around the cell's circumference. A 19 millimeter cube magnet was located one millimeter below the cell's rear surface. A black piece of paper covers the top of the magnet to reduce reflections. In figure 14 we see the magnet pole with parallel diffuse lighting and in figure 15 we see a magnet dipole with parallel diffuse lighting. In both images, we see a smooth, thin, manifold-like sheet changing phase angle in proportion to the magnetic field gradient due to the non-locality of the light source. Dark circles are magnetic poles where the particle chains are parallel to the field and prevent the light from reaching the camera. Dark division between poles is the block region of the magnet. In experiment E, I'm using a green laser light source to illustrate the polarization of the applied magnetic field determines the phase angle of the dynamic optical speckle from the ferrolens. In figure 16, we see a movie showing the laser source perpendicular to the thin film projected onto a black screen and it creates a 360 degree phase shift of dynamic optical speckle from the slow rotation of an applied magnetic field. Figure 17A and 17B show the laser source parallel to the thin film as viewed on the surface of a ferro lens and how it creates a closed loop of dynamic optical speckle around the pole of the magnet seen on the left that gets larger in B as it, the magnet moves closer to the center of the lens and it gets larger in diameter the further away from the point of entry into the thin film. Experiment F is another laser experiment that illustrates the magnetic lensing effect. A green laser is used as a light source perpendicular to the thin film. A 45 degree polarized magnetic field is applied 5 millimeter distant from the front surface of a ferro lens. The laser beam passes over the magnet at a 2 millimeter distance, then through the ferro lens and projected onto a black screen placed first at a distance of 5 centimeters then again at 50 centimeters away from the rear side of the lens. 
And in figure 18, we see a movie showing the projected dynamic optical speckle at 45 degree polarization and 5 millimeter wide particle chain activity at 5 centimeter distance. In the other movie, figure 19, we see it is magnified to a wider dispersion of 20 millimeters at a distance of 50 centimeters and with a larger speckle size. And finally, experiment G, system collapse at maximum entropy. Once the system reaches equilibrium and the particle chains stop moving, the ferro lens's ability to scatter light will end. Here in figure 20, we have a 14 frame time lapse movie over a seven day period with an applied dipole magnetic field below. The ferro lens is illuminated with a ring of 36 alternating red, green, and white LEDs parallel to the thin film around the lens's circumference. If we gauge the pool of fluid in the center of the magnetic field as a reference, we can see the rate of entropy is exponential and it will take much longer for the system to return to its static colloidal state than a week. Note the pool of ferrofluid has centered between magnetic poles within the block region. To summarize, I've shown how the response of iron changes from an applied magnetic field as its particle size decreases, and how a nanopowder responds in the same field, and how a ferrofluid that exists normally in an opaque super paramagnetic state can change its characteristics into a transparent ferromagnetic state when influenced by a magnetic field. The ferro lens allows us to view the effects of magnetism on particles that respond with six degrees of freedom and create a real-time visual representation of a magnet's lowest potential in 3D space. It is my hope that this information will stimulate open thought and constructive debate about these magnificent displays of scattered light. This tool and these methods open new possibilities for the control and manipulation of light and a greater understanding of the effects of magnetism on matter. Looking to the future, I encourage you to closely examine all of the references I've provided along with this presentation and see the effects of magnetism from an alternative perspective using a ferro lens.